Well, until I got a bad leak on the power steering. But, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clean some of this dirt and stuff off of here to where I can get to these tie rod bolts and take that whole bracket off instead of just taking the brake caliber. There's a bolt right there that holds that whole bracket on there. I'm going to take all that off at one time instead of loosening the caliber. Try to do it that way. But I got to get some of this mess cleaned off of here first where we can see what we're working with. All right, we going to break these two bolts loose on this bracket, which is this one. I don't know if we can see the one under here, but come around. It's back up under, I can feel it with my finger, if I can find it right there. Something at the bottom. And they could be a 15 millimeter. So I'm get a 15 millimeter on there. Try to get my other wrench on there too. All I want to do is try to break them loose right now. A five gallon bucket. About the right height for this job here. And these bolts broke loose so easy. I thought that top one stripped for a minute. Now if it had just come off of there like I would want it to and everything stay in place there we go let that rest up there now we got to get to this uh, tie rod in over here now on this tie rod in we got a pin that runs through that bolt to hold it in place. Safety pin to keep that bolt from screwing back off of there. We can go ahead and remove it. This is a 21 millimeter. But let's see if we can put our ratchet, not our ratchet, but our uh, pull handle on here. Get this one broke loose. Boy. It doesn't hurt that hand. Can't stick in the there. Got it broke loose. It took some persuading, but it come loose. Had to stick my head under there with it to get a good swing on it. I ain't wanted to mess up them threads. But I don't know where my brass hammer went. All right, got that laid out the way. This should swing around. There we go. Move my bucket back some. I'm 
now we can get to that bolt that hold, holds the ball joint in there. You know how good you can see. Where's my hand at? Right there. I'm going to have to get a light. Anyhow, I hope you can see it. But this bottom ball joint has got a pin that goes through that nut too. So I'm going to try to get it out of there. And then got it loose and nice. Got to get it out. See if we can see it from the other way. Come on out of there. I have to go get my big pair of pliers. I'm trying to give me some frustration here today. Okay. Now up top on this top ball joint. Right back here. It's another 15 millimeter. Goes that top ball joint. Let's see if I'm yeah, that broke loose. It should break loose pretty easy with as much grease as under here. No, yeah, she wants to be kind of tough. My socket. Don't want to break a wrench. Try to give me a hard time. Let's see. Bet you loose enough. I'll put that pull bar on your butt. I broke that one loose. But one thing I don't understand on this top ball joint, and that's your ball joint right there. You got this bolt and it just tightens these two pieces together around it. You don't have no bolt through the top. But this top one has a snap ring around it. The bottom one don't. It has the screw down there or the um, nut the hole up on the bottom one. I don't know I'm not the engineer but it works it but on this particular model we don't have the upper control arm it's this ball joint and that ball joint and I get this bracket off of here that holds these ball joints we'll see now what I noticed the other day when I was trying to break loose this bottom ball joint with that nut, I couldn't get the half inch drive ratchet on there. I just didn't have enough room to kind of wiggle it to get your pull bar on there. To get hit to fit. On there, you got just enough room to get it on there to break it loose. So let's see if we can get a broke. There we go. So we got it broke loose. So I had just enough room to get that that pull handle under there with the half inch drive to break it loose with the short wall socket. Then what I had to do was take a uh, crescent wrench because I don't have a 24 inch boxed in wrench and finish loosening that down some. 
And another thing that happened the other day, when I got the crescent wrench and started loosening, on the other side the whole ball joint wanted to turn. So I had to take the ball joint fork and drive up in there to put pressure on it to stop it from turning where I could get the uh, nut loose as much as what I wanted to. But we could go ahead and loosen this and then we'll get to the next part. Okay YouTube, we got our top ball joint loosened all the way off. I'm just letting the bolt hang in there. But now what we're going to do, and I can't film this part, is down here, at this bottom ball joint, I just loosened that nut off. I got a gap up under here. Now I'm going to take my, uh, got to find it, a ball joint fork, and I'm going to drive it in there and, and break that ball joint loose. But I can't film it and uh, hit it with that hammer. I'll be busting my camera all the pieces drawing back with it. But that's all I'm going to do. But I left that nut on there on the top. Let's see if I can find it. It's up there, right there. I didn't take that nut all the way off. I left that on there because when it breaks loose, I ain't want it to fall all the way down. But my ball joint's down there and there's the nut up there on the top. So I'm just wanting it to fall enough to break loose. But that nut will still be holding it up instead of the whole thing falling from under there. But I'm going to go ahead and do that and knock it loose. This is where the fun comes in if you was a kid swinging a baseball bat or something or a hammer lighting the beat on stuff. But anyhow, on this part, I ain't worried about messing nothing up. Give a man a hammer, the whole world's a nail. Okay, so we broke it loose. And it fell down. This, that bolt's the only thing holding it up. We can go ahead and loosen that off. And this whole piece here is going to, as I loosen that bolt, it's going to fall down. And, uh... That's why I had trouble the last time that I had to drive the uh, fork back in there to put pressure on it because the whole um, ball joint wanted to turn with the nut. But I'm going to go ahead because I got to hold up on this and turn that because the whole works is going to come down and fall out as I'm loosening that bolt. And we'll get back with you on the next part in a minute. Okay, we got it off of there. I'm going to go ahead and remove this bottom boot. And then I got to figure out, I'm going to remove this bottom ball joint first. But I got to figure out what press um, tools I need to go with to remove it. That's the hardest part for me figuring out, is which ones to use. But I'm going to sit here and figure them out, and then we'll get to pressing them out of there. All right, you two, I'm sure you the hookup I'm going to go with here. I've got this bigger piece of tubing that I know that the, the um, part on the um, ball joint will push up in between. I might just have to get it set right whenever I start to do it. But this part has got lips on it and them lips will fit up to match this. Kind of hard to do this by myself. I'll put this up against the bottom of the ball joint. And then this cap over it like this to push that ball joint back up through there. And I know that the shaft on the ball joint ain't going to um, get caught on there because, as you can see, it fits over. Just want to make sure that it's lined up to fit over it. 
but I'm gonna have to get the wifey to film this part. Okay, so we got a backstop, got a piece in there up against the bottom of the um, ball joint, got our coupling, and got our fitting piece that what the top of the joint fits up into the C clamp there. We could give this a shot and see if we can press it out of there. Alright YouTube, I want to thank my buddy Shelton for the use of this power, battery powered um, impact wrench. We can see if we can press this uh, ball joint out of here. Let's see if we can get it to come out of there. This filming by yourself kind of rough. We got a kid out there now. So let's see if we can go ahead and press this ball joint on through there. There we go. We got that one loose. And that is what that one there looks like. Now these don't have no grease fitting, so I imagine these are the ones that came on the 96 Ranger back when it was built. Lasted a long time. Now this top ball joint has a snap ring on it. Yeah, I'm an ink ink you. Now I got a kid out here helping me work. I have to get this snap ring over this top one. Come on, you break loose there. Come on, come on. There we go. Thing been on there forever. Ain't it right, Nadine? What you mean, eh? Eh, eh, nothing. I'm out here. Look at my hands. Look at my hands. My hands all scarred up and skin toe off of them. Yeah, and you don't even care. All right, YouTube, for the next process all we did to move this upper ball joint, we put the uh, tube up there, put this one over the top. We removed the screw all the way, put it through there, and come through the bottom where we just removed that lower ball joint. And I'm going to try not to bother with no cups or nothing on this one. I'm getting late in time here now. It's getting late in the evening. And it's hard being a cameraman and all that. And the same thing. But we could try to remove this one. Mommy! Without, um... Putting any plate on the bottom. <laughs> Up here, Chris. I already took the snap ring out of there. There we go. 
had to hit the right side of the button. Mommy. See if I'd had a cameraman out there the whole time. I could have made this so much quicker. Put her back together. Get new. What we could do now is reverse the process. We got our fittings hooked up to where they'll pull that ball joint back down in there, but we still had to come up all the way through from the bottom like we did before. Uh, let's see if we can pull her down in there. This, you know, filming and doing everything by yourself is kind of hard. flush okay so that top ball joint gets a snap ring and I'm sure we got it seated deep enough if that snap ring will go on there There we go. Snapped into place, so she's on there good. Now to do the bottom. Before I forget, I took the rubber boot off. Before I pressed this on there, and I cleaned everything off to make sure I didn't get sand and dirt in there so now I'm gonna go ahead and press this rubber boot back over this bushing I mean over this um ball joint now for this lower ball joint I want to take the rubber boot off it also set it inside where no grease won't get uh, no sand won't get in it and stuff want to match the um, size of the coupling up to where it fits over that lip and we can press it back in I know we could come from this away and press it back in from this away doing the opposite direction put this over there another ball over the top cap it off on the bottom pull it back down Okay, the way I got this impact wrench still set up is in forward. But I got everything on this C clamp set up in reverse. So instead of pushing, when it's turning forward, it should be pulling. So let's see if we can pull the um, ball joint down in there. Alright, now we got that bottom one pressed on. Put our boot back over that bottom one. Keep any dirt and sand and stuff from out of there. So 
We got both joints took off and pressed back on there. Alright, we got the ball joints back pressed in there. I went ahead and uh, put the grease fittings back in there. And instead of waiting to put it on the truck, I'm going to go ahead and hit a few dashes of grease. Just enough to see it. See them boots pump up a little bit. Then airbird things won't aggravate me today. Hit this one here, just enough to see the boot pump up. So there we go. All right, let it go. I wish a catfish would grab it like that. Now hold on. Here we go. Bet I got it loose that time. All right, we're ready to put it back on the truck. All right, here's where the tough part's going to begin. It's getting this nut back on that bottom ball joint and holding it up by myself. If I get it on there, then we got the rest of it made. But this is a wrestling match here. Got the lineup. There's two. Holes and pick up on this buzzer by yourself. Come on. Hold up on this thing by yourself and get this nut started. Just believe me, this whole chunk of steel ain't light. <sighs> now to hold itself. And on that bottom ball joint, I don't know what the torque pressure is supposed to be. I tighten it enough with my crescent wrench. And put the pin in there, and I'm just going to tighten up on this top ball joint where I think it's good and tight and hold. But remember, I'm not a professional mechanic. This is just some shade tree mechanic work right here. To keep your vehicle going, this is how I do it at home. Oh, we got to make sure we remember to put this eight millimeter bolt screw back in this pan that covers this rotary. We're going to hook the uh, tie rod in back up on this side. And all we got left to put on that bracket with the uh, brake caliber. Well, like I say, YouTube. Um, this suspension up here on the front, it don't have the, um, top control arm. My 98 Ranger that's around there has a control arm up there that comes down with a, um, a ball joint. But this one, it has that bracket down in there with the two ball joints down there on that bracket. 
but we got it apart and we got it back together. Next thing I got to work on, well, one thing I got to work on is the uh, power steering pump and the radius arm bushings. I knew that they gone, but I hate to start on them. But I wanted to work on these ball joints to make sure that they wasn't going to fall from under there with me on some of them rough roads. So that's what we've been doing for the day. Well, I'm a shade tree pixie man. I don't need any help in hand. I'm a jack of all trades when I'm working in the shade. I'm a shade tree pixie man. Hey YouTube, we got it. Everything back on the the motor tires is wearing on the very inside. So I, you could tell they was kind of uh, bowed in at the top and it letting them sit out at the bottom. Maybe they'll kind of wear more even now. It drives a whole lot better, a whole lot smoother. Ain't pulling as bad. It may be out of alignment stay yet a little bit. But anyhow, we got them ball joints on there. That's, that's the main thing and we'll work on some of the other stuff a little bit later and take care of it but anyhow that's how I spent my day I appreciate you watching and we'll get back out there and we'll do some fishing and stuff sometime or another just waiting on this water to get right but anyhow we got it back under there where I didn't want it to eat out them newer tires so quick but anyhow we'll catch you later the next time you two Welcome back YouTube, do a uh, video, let y'all know I'm still here, um, I've been working on some stuff here lately, the river, it's kind of stirred up and a little bit muddy looking, not muddy muddy, but kind of dingy like, uh, I tried to catfish a couple of days ago, they wasn't biting, but uh, I tried today and I figured got deer season getting near. Get out here and change the ball joints on this 96 Ford Ranger. Um, I changed the passenger side the other day. Now I'm going to get over here and work on the driver side today and see how much of a fit this side gives me. Anyhow, we could get out here and got some shade right now, but the sun's coming, making it to the truck. But over in the evening, we have shade again. We got us a fan right here to kind of keep us cool a little bit. Anyhow, we'll work on this and see what we can do with these ball joints on here and see if we can get these changed on the driver's side without having too much of a hitch in our giddy up. <laughs> 